Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Social Media Decoded Podcast, the number one podcast to help you understand social media better so that you grow your business, get more clients, and monetize. And today, you know, you know, I get really excited when we have special guests, and we have a special guest today from Hootsuite. Oh my goodness, if you haven't heard about Hootsuite, I don't know where you may have been in the social media world. I think back to when I first started on social media, I probably started on the Hootsuite platform. So we are going to be talking about the 2023 trends, even some 2024 trends. When you're listening to this, it may be, you know, almost 2024 and it's never too late to start thinking about that. So welcome, Costa. Thank you so much for coming on the Social Media Decoder podcast. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Michelle. I'm excited to be here and chatting about 2023-2024 trends. Uh, Yes, I love (laughs) it. So could you introduce yourself and let us know a little bit more about your background? How did you get started with Hootsuite? Good question. Yeah. So for context for everybody, uh, I'm a senior copywriter here at Hootsuite, and I have the dubious pleasure of sitting in the back corner of the office for about four months a year and researching and writing our trends report. And genuinely, it's my favorite time of year. So that is the large part of what I do at Hootsuite while also writing landing pages, promotional copy, that kind of thing. And I guess that's roughly where my career started. So I started as a copywriter. Um, I got an internship. I got lucky enough to get an internship straight out of school where I graduated with an English lit degree. And then as I imagine, Many people listening on this contest or on this on this podcast, uh, um, you wonder what am I going to do with an English degree when I graduate? And uh, I ended up starting at an ad agency as a copywriter. I then did a master's program uh, just to kind of refine my skills in communications. And really, at the end of that, I was in this position where I knew that I liked to write. I knew that I liked marketing. I knew that I had a uh, a kind of foundation in this, but I didn't have the mentorship and I didn't feel like I uh, knew where to go to build my skills as a copywriter. And that was essentially my application to Hootsuite. I knew they had a very, very strong uh, copywriting team. And yeah, I got lucky enough to get an interview, get in the door and I get to sit with them every day now. So that's, that's a little bit of how I ended up here. That's pretty cool. And it just shows like we all have different backgrounds. And I feel I definitely I did not I do not have a marketing degree. This is all like self-taught and learned. And so I really love, you know, talking to other people who love marketing just as much because I think like marketing is a science. We get to like nerd out about these things and because it is a science, the algorithms. Oh, my. It's like all these things that we're doing. And it's frustrating sometimes. But that's why we have the Social Media Decoded podcast and that you all are listening. So get ready to take out your pens and notepads because gems are about to be dropped. So let's get into it. If you are in the social media industry, we've heard of Hootsuite, right? Like we've said. So you talked about the 2023 social media trend report that was put out. Can you give us just a little bit of, you know, 2023 trends, but also let's talk about too, what are your thoughts on things that you're seeing evolving now that may be a big thing in 2024. So let's start with 2023 and go into 2024. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, The biggest thing that we noticed in 2023, we were kind of at this liminal moment where uh, pandemic restrictions were waning. People had invested a lot in e-commerce. People had uh, businesses, large and small, had started investing a lot more in social media because, I mean, out of home didn't make a whole lot of sense. People weren't going about their commutes. Uh, There was a lot more customer service requests coming through social. Uh, It was the main place where people were having conversations with brands and about brands and making product purchase decisions and things like that. And as those restrictions started waning, the question was, okay, are we going to see this investment in social media stay uh, flat, uh, have, have have businesses realize the value of it, or are we going to see investment in social media drop and things go back more and more to kind of normal pre-pandemic levels? And one of the things that we actually found was that marketers' confidence in social media as a marketing tool was still at an all-time high. So that suggests that a lot of executives, a lot of uh, leaders in the marketing space saw the value in social media and started to invest in it more as a channel. Uh, And I actually have the stats with me. I don't remember them off the top of my head. It's been a minute. Um, But here, I'm going to pull them out. So 
What's telling is this confidence is clearly reflected in the proportion of the marketing budget that's being allocated to social. While marketing budgets have climbed to nearly 10% of total company revenue in 2022, up from 6% in 2021, they still lag behind pre-pandemic levels and spend on social media relative to pre-pandemic levels is going up too, which, and it's predicted to increase steadily over the next five years. So I think that the main takeaway from 2023 is that social media marketing as a career isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, and I'm sure that that sounds probably uh, uh, like bread and butter to a lot of folks in this podcast. They're like, I know, like I spend every day in it and my responsibilities have increased. I'm doing cut more customer service. I'm getting, talking with the sales teams. Um, but that was our biggest kind of core takeaway was, uh, yeah, the industry's strong. Um, for 2024, the kind of questions that I'm asking myself, uh, a lot about efficiency. Uh, think about what do AI tools mean for social media managers? Uh, how are they going to affect the networks? How are they going to affect your daily workload? And so these are all kind of questions that I have simmering in the back of my head while I think about survey design, while I pull together a team of uh, brilliant analysts and we start to get going in 2024. Um, I think that it's going to be the year of what does efficiency look like for social media managers and how do these tools impact them? How's that? Oh, <laughs> That was good. And you what? touched on AI, which when I say that I love AI, I love chat GPT, I use it every day. I used it before, just before I jumped on a call with you to put together something like it has changed my role as a social media strategist and just as a business owner in general, because now I can get my clients work done quicker. I can get my work done quicker. Even my VA, we can all get our work done quicker. The podcast team, everybody, we can all get our work done faster. It's just more efficient. Now we don't have to spend a lot of time in the research phase. I think that there are a lot of people that are maybe afraid of AI. What do you tell those people who are afraid of AI right now? Oh, good question. I think I to some degree, I'm still one of those people. I, I'm not afraid of it in like a, in my day to day sense. I don't think anything is going to change uh, immediately, but I experiment with it. I mean, I think with anything new and unfamiliar, it's very easy to uh, be put off by it and to avoid it and to not let it change your day to day. And I think if you want to experience a lot of career growth, maybe I'm projecting a little bit here. It's a matter of opening up chat GPT and putting in some prompts, getting experimental with it. Watch some YouTube videos about people who have been using it uh, effectively and embrace the parts of it that are working for you and put away the rest. Um, that, that, that's kind of what I would say to myself looking in a mirror. <laughs> no, I love that. And that was, that was, some good tips because there are people who may be apprehensive. I'm 100% in there, but I know there are some people who are totally like, I don't know, but I think it's a great thing. Like you said, play around with it. I, you do have to be smart, a smart cookie to really figure out how to use it for your business. So think about the output. Think about, you know, those type of things like in your social media content and posts. It can just help social media managers too to give them a starting point and not have to start from zero because we know what it feels like having no content. 100%. Absolutely. Yes. So let's talk about social media managers, booming industry, right? And so there are a lot of social media managers who are listening. Hey, everyone, I'm so excited you're listening. So these days, you know, there's a need for it. What are some tips and tricks that you want to share with listeners about being a social media manager? Like, are there special things that they should be doing? How do you get noticed for this? What if you don't have a marketing background? Share a few tips for us. Yeah. Um, that's a very good question. I mean, I think my first tip would be to get experimental with the networks uh, to you, you have to use a lot of social media if you want to get to know social media. Plain and simple. I mean, the platforms are changing so quickly. It's hard for any one person to keep up. That's kind of the whole role of this report and what we're trying to do here. We're trying to keep up as well as, best as we can. But I, th it's saying that I know how hard it is. Uh, so get experimental. That's that's the first thing. Uh, get to know the networks personally and for yourself uh, before experimenting with them for your brand or your, for your business. Um, and yeah, I think that the other thing is, and this is a difficult one, but like being building a level of self assurance 
um, as a social media manager, I think oftentimes uh, the responsibility for managing social media can be can seem kind of nebulous to executives or to large to people in larger organizations who are used to bread and butter marketing tactics. And for them, social media is this new thing that seems kind of uh, that, that's a bit niche and kind of off in its own little corner. So it gets allocated to one person. Uh, and they can seem kind of like a rogue within their organizations, uh, oftentimes. And so, yeah, I, I think the big takeaway would be to find a community of social media managers, talk to people in your space and build a level of self-assurance that you know what you're doing, uh, and then find ways of communicating that back. If there's people around you who are still skeptical, um, but although we're finding more and more that they're less skeptical, so that's good. <laughs> And you said it right there. I was that one person social media manager department. So I definitely get it. But I feel like the industry is evolving. People are maybe starting to understand that one person cannot do it all. Like email, social media, copywriting, the blog, um, everything. I mean, I was doing influencer marketing, e-commerce. Um, so, I mean, I'm grateful for the skills, but one person cannot do all of those jobs. Well, I guess I am a like a what do they call it? Master of every, uh, digital marketing, I guess, because I mean, I'm glad though, because now I can be a fractional CMO to my clients because I do have all those skills. And so I am grateful for that. So what I'm saying to everyone listening is if you are in a position, you're like, oh my God, I'm doing all of these tasks. Well, what can you take if this is not your end all be all and say, I could take this to another area and do this and, and help my organization with this or hey you can do this so you have all these skills so think about the different ways you can utilize them totally and the way that i've heard it put uh by other people is that the social media manager's role is much more of a mediator between the social networks and the business itself and yes the expectation should not be on the social media manager to be copywriter photographer video producer strategist creative director like that that's that's too much for anybody. Uh, but finding people within your organization who are skilled in specific departments and then helping them understand social media to enable them to do better work, that is the core responsibility. And if you do that well, you're going to soar. Um, so yeah, and pick and choose. I mean, it, it really is a role that you can kind of craft for yourself and has a lot of responsibility attached to it. But uh, I think if you find a way to get really excited about that and to make the role what you want it to be, um, you could be a CMO, you could be a creative director, you could really take it wherever you want. <laughs> yeah, and it's so much opportunity, it's so new. So if you want to be a social media manager today, I say go for it, use the skills that you may already have in your current role and just start to apply for these social media roles. Maybe Hootsuite might have something open one day. Who knows? I don't know. The sky's the limit. You know, it's so much possibility. It's still new and a fresh area. And so we're growing and continuing to evolve. So this is what I'm hearing is tap into your skills because it seems like me and you, we both tapped into our skills and we're able to tap into social media and marketing. Um, because all we're doing is helping other people, right? Social media. And I know at some of these organizations, they may not get it. They're like, oh, social media, social media. No, this is building a community for your customers, for your clients, the people who really are invested in your business. They're on social media. They're your cheerleaders. They are the people who show up for your brand the most. So social media is that way that you can show that appreciation, that you can interact with them, do a giveaway. I mean, there's so many different things to utilize it for it. I think that we just have to keep preaching that it's not like an instant return on investment. It is a investment in your time, a investment in investing in community and building, and then you will see that dollar might continue, but it's not going to happen overnight. Absolutely. 100%. That was a gem drop right there. Was perfect. Yeah. I was like, like we should, we could cut. <laughs> yes. I hope you, I hope everyone will take a note. Um, tag me on Instagram at Michelle L. Thames. If that was a gem drop, let me know. So, <laughs> I want to talk about some books and resources because there's so many books and resources to help us grow. And again, there are a lot of social media managers and my marketing people that listen to this podcast. I appreciate all of you. Shout out to you all. Were there any books that helped you or resources that helped you along your journey? Yeah, absolutely. I actually have the list that I've dropped on the floor right here. So as I ungraciously pick it up, um, I can, so I can't speak specifically to social media management uh, and books and resources that I think would be helpful for social media managers. 
because my background and my skill set is more copywriting. Uh, but for social media managers that there's copywriters to... listening too, so this is good. Exactly. exactly. And social media managers that want to up their copy game and get better as a copywriter and figure out the craft, uh, I have a list. So my personal favorite that I like to keep on the side of my desk oftentimes, uh, Dan Nelkin, who was a creative director at Lululemon for a while. He's actually also based out of Vancouver, where Hootsuite's based. Really, really lovely guy uh, and a very supportive copywriter on LinkedIn. I suggest giving him a follow. He has a book called The Self-Help Guide for Copywriters. And it's just a list of prompts to get you unstuck when you're feeling kind of when the creative juices aren't flowing and you need something to kind of uh, something to kind of perk you up more than than your second morning coffee. Uh, so that sit, stays on my desk. Oftentimes the the holy grail for copywriters is probably uh, David Ogilvy's Confessions of an Advertising Man. I mean, that's a classic. It's a bit of it. And. I know that there's purists who are going to get mad at me for this. It's a bit of a dated book, but it's one that you have to read. It's canon. Uh, so I would suggest picking up a copy of that. Uh, Joseph Sugarman wrote a uh, guide for copywriting with Adweek a long time ago. I suggest picking up a copy of that. That's very much like a manual textbook if you like that kind of learning. And if you're specifically looking to build your skill set as a digital writer, uh, websites, landing pages, email marketing, copy, my personal favorite uh, style guide and manual is Kate Kiefer Lee, who is the, I think she's still there, uh, the copy lead at MailChimp uh, has written a phenomenal book uh, about writing for digital spaces. So I would definitely suggest picking that up and yeah, read a lot. I mean, that's my other big takeaway. Read things that aren't necessarily marketing related. They'll always add to your creativity and help you make connections uh, and bring in novel ideas, which helps you create better content, which helps you have richer conversations. So yeah, go to the bookstore and just rate it. Pick up a book. <laughs> Absolutely. No, those are some really, really good recommendations. So thank you so much for sharing those. And yes, there are definitely copywriters. And I myself, um, you know, have some freelance writing experience under my awesome. belt. So definitely a great tool. And, for, you know, writing is not a, a easy feat. You really have to know, you know, how to tell a story. There's a start, a middle, a finish. And right now I'm writing a book. So please, everyone continue to wish, wish me well as I continue to write this book. And as I was saying, I was listening to all those books and I'm saying it's, it's time for you to write a book. <laughs> I mean, I could ask you about your process because that's really exciting. Congratulations. Thank I, you. I don't need to even start. So the fact that you're putting pen to paper and organizing those thoughts, I hope it's going well. It is. And it is. It is a task. I will say that. So there's a lot of thought process that goes into it. I think I got it now. So we're, we're on the road to getting it finished and I have a deadline. So I have to actually finish this. So that's this weekend thing. I'm doing a writing retreat. So if anyone here is thinking of writing a book, you can do it. <laughs> Keep going. I know this episode wasn't about that, but there were so many books that you mentioned about, about some amazing people who MailChimp. I mean, I know some of you have heard of MailChimp, right? I know you've used it. I've used it. So again, check out these amazing books. Check out the resources. Thank you so much. This has been a really great episode, jam-packed with some gems. So you might have to go back and re-listen. I know you all like to binge the Social Media Decoded episode, which I appreciate. Um, but thank you so much. Could you let us know where can we find you online and where can we find out more about Hootsuite and the Trends Report? Because we probably need to sign up somewhere to get this. Yeah, absolutely. So we have it ungated, actually, on our website. Uh, if you type in Social Media Trends 2023, it should be the first result on Google. I think we did as good enough on SEO to do that. Uh, definitely, if you type in Hootsuite Social Media Trends Report, it's going to be the first hit to pop up. So I suggest people hit the link there. Uh, and the 2024 report will be coming out in the next few months. So that link will just keep updating. Go back to it. Read it over and over again. Keep it as a guide. Um, and where you, can you find me? I'm most active for now on Twitter. Uh, so if you go to, I think it's Costa.Pradanovic, uh, at Costa.Pradanovic, feel free to follow me there. Or if you type in my full name, uh, into LinkedIn, unfortunately it's a very long Slavic name, Konstantin Pradanovic or Costa Pradanovic Hootsuite, feel free to connect with me there. Again, any young social media managers or copywriters who are looking for advice or direction uh and somebody to point them in the right direction 
I'm more than happy to answer any questions uh, if you feel like it's useful. So thank you so much for having me, Michelle, and good luck with your book. Yes, awesome. Now, we'll make sure we put all the info down in the show notes so you all will have all the information on how to reach out and get the juicy new 2024 report. I mean, it's never too late to get ahead, so start to think about your business. And if you're a social media manager or copywriter, make sure that you connect with Costa over on uh, Twitter. I, you know, I've, I I got to think about Twitter because it's I know it was a dumpster fire, so it just gives me I don't know, anxiety just to think about it. Maybe I need to get back on there, but I don't know. You just reminded me. It's changing fast. That's all I can really say. It's like, hold on. We don't know what's going to happen. Maybe we should do, hey, stay tuned for an update on Twitter uh, um, episode about that because we got, hold on. I don't know what's going on. (laughs) But thank you so much. Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode and we'll talk to you all in the next one.